So the Pentagon releases tons of documents talking about UFOs, and then Amazon decides to drop the vast of night on Prime now. Coincidence? No, to total coincidence, actually. What's going on you guys, James here with another real review and today we're talking all about Amazon Prime's The Vast of Night coming to you by way of first time director Andrew Patterson. Now I know my eyes got really big there because this film does not feel like a movie a first time director would produce. Their debuts usually aren't as smooth but Man, there's a lot to unpack from this very low budget sci-fi movie. Now before we get into what I loved and what I didn't really like about this movie, if it's your first time here at the channel, guys, thanks so much for stopping on by and if you like movies and TV shows while I talk about them, I review them early and I'm blessed to be able to connect with each and every one of you, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, and it's really important that you like this video and share it with your friends because guys, liking this video helps me out so much. And go ahead and get loud in the comments below, let me know, have you have you seen The Vast of Night? Have you heard of this sci-fi movie? And if not, I hope you guys watch it this weekend if you're a fan of sci-fi movies. That's going to be important later on in this review, but let's go ahead and get started in talking about what the heck this movie really is. While The Vast of Night is being released on Prime Video, this isn't the year that it actually debuted. It actually debuted at TIFF in 2019 and some other festivals before that as well, but the general audience that went to those festivals saw this movie already. That's why Letterboxd already has a ton of reviews and ratings up and yeah I'm really glad I got to see this one like I said this is director Andrew Patterson's first movie and the screenwriters that he hired for this film are actually debuting for their first time as well now it's funny because I read the summary for this movie and I was totally in from the moment Amazon Studios was able to reach out to me and throw me a link so let's go ahead and read the summary together in the twilight of the 1950s on one fateful night in New Mexico young switchboard operator Faye and charismatic radio DJ Everett discover a strange audio frequency that could change their small town and the future forever if that doesn't sound to you like a really good novel that you'd read or a great episode of the Twilight Zone I don't know what does and it sold me completely. The minute the movie started though, it gave me those Twilight Zone vibes. I mean, even in the beginning of the movie, you hear the TV announcer say you are entering a realm of, and then there's this old TV that you kind of just slowly get closer to and the camera eventually pans right into this episode of TV that deals with, well, the vast of night. That's exactly what it's titled. And immediately I start to notice this one shot that's going on and it's tailing behind our main character Everett or one of our main characters and some other guy at this high school that, well, of course they attend and they're going into a basketball game in this gymnasium and you can hear the fanfare and everything, but the camera's always kind of tailing characters in the beginning. You never get close on these conversations so much so that even moments of dialogue that are very important you just kind of see the backs of their heads and I thought at first okay this is an interesting approach but what it made me do was tune into this snappy dialogue Everett doesn't take a breath and neither does Faye I mean there are so many moments here where I forgot to breathe and not for a long time but I'm like oh okay inhale and then exhale okay that's where we're at and when it gets really mysterious in the end uh, yeah it gets pretty intense but speaking about this mysterious tone I absolutely love the vibe here it's a very lo-fi and you can tell that they're of course in the 60s and there's this vintage approach and even more so when you see Everett who's played by Jake Horowitz uh, stringing together film or I'm sorry tape reels get the reels mixed up but it's neat because you don't see that anymore of course we don't use tapes too much everything's digitized but here it really does play to that old bone in your body and it's fun. Now if you're not a fan of slow burns, you might not be a fan of the beginning of The Vast of Night. There's a very slowish approach and 40 minutes in is when you start to really get, I guess, uh, ramped up in your curiosity and the intensity starts to get a little bit more intense, which is great, but if you're not a fan of slow burns, similar to Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, for example, you're not going to really appreciate how much patience is required to get through the story because here, guys, you're going to need some patience. But what's great is you don't really have to wait too long to see how great Jake Horowitz and Sierra McCormick, our two leads, are together. Their chemistry is amazing. Sierra McCormick plays Faye, who's this switchboard operator. She's very energetic. She 
loves to just record people, interview people. Eventually, I mean, she wants to graduate and work on a bigger switchboard, but Everett, played by Jay Korowitz, is really just trying to give her the motivation she needs to break out of her shell. I love the dialogue. Their back and forth is so fun, and it really is what kind of glues the film together. I do like the direction, don't get me wrong, and the screenplay is awesome, but if not for our two leads here, I don't think I'd be as interested in the story. And what's great about actors that kind of just blow me away and I haven't seen much of their work is that they're put on my radar and I want to see what they do next. And I'm so excited for Jake and Sierra. I don't know what is next for them, honestly, but if it's anything like this, it's going to be super promising. Now, of course, when someone is debuting as a director, there are hits and there are misses, and Andrew Patterson has a little bit of both. Luckily, he does have more hits. However, there are different techniques that he utilizes, like that one shot I told you about, that can start to feel a little gimmicky after a while. You're almost distracted by the one shots. That's not to say they're not effective, because a good one shot can immerse you into the story and exactly what characters are saying and doing. Here, that happens like 50% of the time, and then the other 50% of the time, those one shots didn't necessarily grab me as much as I thought they would, but maybe that's because they were being overused. You start to notice the technique rather than what's on screen, and that can be a little distracting for me as a viewer. But when the conversations are really, really good, the camera does this awesome thing where it just kind of slowly inches closer and closer and eventually you think to yourself, oh my gosh, um, uh, I feel claustrophobic. And that's the point, I think, of those sorts of moments. There's one moment in particular towards the end of the film that I cannot tell you about because it is a spoiler. You have to watch it for yourself. I was glued to my screen. But what really is weird is that those moments are where the film thrives and then all of a sudden Andrew Patterson kind of just cuts to black and you still hear the voice of a radio caller for example or of our main characters and then it comes back and then it goes to black again and this happens about three or four times during a very important conversation in the middle of the movie i loved the dialogue i didn't care for that cutting to black and that's just another technique that i think andrew patterson was playing around with that i didn't care too much for i actually thought my monitor was broken for a minute but it wasn't it was just the technique that the director decided to use and it's not the worst thing in the world but it's again distracting but luckily, when you get through all of that and you understand this is his debut film, you start to realize the excellence in this script and the acting. Let me tell you guys something, I am a big fan of when you kind of get lost in a world in a film and you're not necessarily worried about a phone ringing or notifications on your laptop, you're just totally engrossed in a story. Once that 40 minute mark comes into play and everything from that point on to the end of the movie, I was locked in and that's a huge plus with this film and I think maybe it needed to go through that slow burn to build a foundation and guys we're not getting a lot of character development for Jake Horowitz and Sierra McCormick but I'm not gonna lie I don't think we need it because it's just one night right this is everything happening in one night in this small town and it's pretty well done once the end credits roll. Now me being a huge fan of musical composition and film uh, yeah guys, the score here was excellent. Eric Alexander and Jared Bulmer actually did their first score with this film, so there's a lot of first time debuts for people and that's pretty great. And the fact that there's this noticeable score throughout the whole film that is very ominous, it's mysterious, and it almost just kind of rings in your head after it's done playing, and then when you don't hear a score, it's so noticeable. So it really is great how Andrew Patterson was able to kind of bring everyone together and say, you know what guys, it's our first time, but we're going to knock it out of the park. And for the most part, they did. Now, by no means is this going to be a movie I recommend to everybody. If you're not a fan of sci-fi and if you don't like slow burns, you're not going to really enjoy The Vast of Night. But if you're like me and you can appreciate a movie that takes its time while also being quick to the point and really giving you this mysterious vibe that you kind of just want to learn more about, The Vast of Night is for you. I, for one, am really happy that it's being released on Prime Video because Amazon Studios picking it up to distribute it is fantastic. More people need to see this movie, and I hope this gives motivation to Andrew Patterson and his crew to go off and maybe make another sci-fi movie because he's good at it. And above all else, Sierra McCormick and Jake Horowitz really just made me so excited for their next projects because, guys, if I saw this movie in 2019 at these festivals, this probably would have been in my top 15, my top 20 even, because yeah, I'm not going to forget about this sci-fi movie anytime soon. Alrighty, you guys, well, there you have it. That's my review of The Vast of Night, a movie you should definitely add to your watch list on Amazon Prime. It'll be worth your time. If you liked everything you just heard and saw, again, please go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Also, get loud in the comments below if you have seen this movie, and please let me know what you think of the movie. Well, I'm going to go and see if I can catch any UFOs tonight. 
it probably won't happen. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening.